I'm, uh, well, I haven't been on the YouTubes in a while, and, well, it's not a full-time thing for me, so. But, uh, today what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to do a maintenance kit on this uh, 4000. As you guys remember, I did a video on this uh, for you guys that are subscribed. Uh, I did a video on this back in, I think it was 2014. A uh, company that I did some contract work was getting ready to pitch this guy. And it only had 37 impressions or 37,000 impressions, which as anybody knows in the vintage world or computer world that these HP laser jets, especially the 90s flavors, uh, the early 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, into the early 2000s, these are um, one of the best laser printers that HP ever conceived. So when I got this, I knew the fuser was bad. Um, however, I just kind of set it up rebuilt it you know redid all the things inside cleaned it up and it printed okay um wasn't the greatest and it's getting to the point now where the toner's not even sticking to the page it's really bad so, so anyways um what i'm going to do today is uh get ready to disassemble this um, as you guys know, I don't know if I ever did a video, an after video of the added accessories I put on this uh, printer, but I added the tray, which was NOS, uh, the duplexer, and I actually had a hard drive in it, but it went bad. So I've got a new old stock, brand new hard drive for this uh, printer. And I got both of these. This is a genuine maintenance kit. Um, both these on the evil base So what I'm gonna do now is uh, We're gonna unpack this guy and I used to do a crap load of these maintenance kits on laser jet fours four thousands five thousands That's the fuser and Of course it comes with it, this is new old stock. I mean Comes with all the instructions how to do it See, HP LaserJet 4000, which we're working with here. 4000, 4000N, 4000TN. And what these indicated was 4000Ns for network. Um, was, it, was a network printer, which basically said it just came with the EIO network card in the back. So, um, we have instructions here. Have, came with the instruction booklet tells you exactly how to do the maintenance kit and I remember following this step by step the uh, the first time um, looks like they took the cover I, I don't know if I don't remember if we had to take the cover off or not I know you have to take out the rear cover but yeah just some really cool things um, I mean, it came with everything, everything, including down to the gloves, disposable gloves. This is the transfer roller, which gets worn out. And these are all the rollers. And it came with, I believe, all the rollers it needed for all the trays. Brand new, genuine, in, in box, in stock. Um, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to, um, I'm going to remove the toner cartridge. Now, unfortunately, you can see back there that these both broke off and the pieces are back there. So I'm going to have to retrieve those at some point in time. Um, whoops. Jeez, I'm crawl. It's hooked. I don't know what the hell is going on here. There we go. We got the power cable, which is stuck in here when you have the duplexer in there. So we're gonna take the duplexer out. This is the uh, duplexer. This is brand new. 
when I bought it. It was never used. Go ahead and remove the power. We'll remove the network card too. And I did add this network card. It's a uh, Jet Direct 610N. The fuser's right here. We've got to pull this unit out. And as if I can recall how to do it, I don't know if I have to pull it from the side. Well, let's, yeah. Yep, so we're gonna spin this guy around so you can get a better view. There we go. It's like going back to the old days. It's really easy to replace the fuser in this. Um, it's just got two screws. I might have to get the uh, blower to kind of clean this up a little bit. <coughs> there we go. And that's it. That's all there is to it. This is the fuser and the fusers. I don't know why the fuser failed at such a... Uh, this could even be a refurbished unit. I don't know. Um, I've never replaced it. So... I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to kind of follow the instructions. Um, it's cool that they came with it, and I will be keeping that booklet. And as you guys can see, I'm starting my little vintage lab down here. Brand new fuser, genuine HP. Probably been in this box for God knows however long. And then there's a there's a piece of paper in here. Oh Jesus. God, that didn't want to come out at all. Oh, well, maybe I broke it already. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so it's really easy to replace the fusers in these. Boom. That's it. That's all there is to it. Brand new fuser. And I'm sure that, you know, I didn't buy this kit directly from HP, but I believe back in the day when you did, um, they had a fuser exchange program that you would take and submit your old fuser into or you know submit the old fuser back to hp so they could rebuild it and then we're going to go ahead and put this back cover back on because that's what we got to do and we got to make sure i don't know oh okay that's right There we go. Fuser's installed. We won't put the duplexer in yet. Um, Cause next we've gotta, we've gotta retrieve this right here, this um, roller right here. And as I can recall, I should be, I should put the gloves on. Ooh, I don't know what I just did. Uh, I probably broke something. No. Yeah. Well, luckily it was the roller, because we're going to replace that entire unit. Look look at how bad that is. All right. So, sorry about that. I'm helping out a neighbor today. And uh, I think what we need to do is we need to... Make sure. Trying to figure out. Oh, that's how that goes. I think. Jeez, I'm crawl. It's been a while, so. Uh, let's see here.
Oh, that's not right. I used to be really good at these. Um, I'm thinking that this has got to go this way. So I'm thinking it works with that spring somehow. But I feel like it's not. Oh, there it goes. The spring collapsed again. Damn it. Let me get me handy dandy tool here. Huh. Yeah, it's not working like it's supposed to. I put on the gloves. I know you're not supposed to touch this roller with your bare hands. I'm just trying to figure out how this goes in there. Hopefully none of the plastic got brittle and broke. Here's a roller right here in the bypass tray and oh jeez and crawl. Um, we should have one of those. Here it is right here this is that roller right here for the pickup assembly and they used to send out a uh, a pad here too uh, for that but I didn't see that in there so um, I'm doing this live guys so there we go I think that's I don't recall how this comes off no, oh, I think yeah. I think I need a uh, There we go. Yeah, so you gotta pop out that plastic clip so you can lift it right off. Like I said, it's been a while for me since I've done that and that roller is completely gone. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and do this uh, new roller here, new pickup roller. Okay, <clears throat> now that's completed. There's also this was a newer roller because I took it out of the, um, and you can pull these, you can pull these, you hit this tab right here on the roller and it slides right out and you just pull it out like that and pick up one of these and you put it in its place. Now, this isn't meant to be a how-to video. I mean, I guess you could use it as a how-to video, but God, I suck at how-to videos. Okay, and then I have paper down in this tray as well. And as you can see, this roller's no good. So we'll go ahead and tray pickup. So we already did that one. Separation rollers, we did those. Uh, feed rollers. Um, yeah, so we'll have to get to the feed rollers. So maybe maybe they do anticipate because these I think these are feed rollers too. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go ahead and lift the printer off, and uh, I'm not sure if there's feed rollers in this one. We're gonna we're gonna check to make sure here. Oh, yep, we got a feed roller. See right here? So we're gonna go ahead and put the gloves back on. I'm just gonna do it. I should have done it to begin with. I know that was my mistake. 
the transfer roller probably will not last as long as if I would have done it the proper way. Okay, let's go ahead and replace transfer roller. Now this tray right here was a new old stock. It was never used. I got lucky on some parts. I think, you know, cause the 40, the 4,000, the 4,100 and the 4,200 are all the same. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this guy on his side so we don't break anything off. Um, And uh, what I got to do though is I got to remove the tray first. Let's go ahead and remove this. Now we'll turn him on his side. And here's our other roller right there. That one doesn't look too bad, but again, you know, I hardly ever use this printer, so this will probably be the last maintenance kit I'll ever do on it because I probably print one, two, or three things on it. And it's really for the virtual lab, the, um, the vintage virtual lab, that these are gonna be used for. And um, <clears throat> always keep these tools. I mean, they, you, you get them in, oh, that reminds me, I gotta put that in there. Um, Keep those tools, because sometimes, from what I hear, the rebuild kits don't come with it. And we've got, and it looks like we got a couple of extra rollers for another. The uh, HP uh, LaserJet 4000. You know, I, I'm so stupid. Um, so there was a plastic piece that was attached to the other one that rides in there where the spring is and that's why the spring kept popping out uh that snaps in to this uh toner transfer roller right here and uh, i didn't have that in there so it wasn't working quite right we're gonna we're gonna try to run it through one more time should be fine that was that was it because it wasn't able to spin the scanner up. <clears throat> now we're going to check it out and see if it's the toner cartridge. Because it could be. I mean, this toner cartridge when I bought it was old. So, back then, Lexmark and HP, you could swap toner cartridges. It was quite neat. Um, I don't know if they just did it that way or if Lexmark just copied HP or they had like a coalition going on but between this printer to between HP and Lexmark printers they're probably the best ones in the world And I think the reason I was getting the shitty print was because that scan or the uh, scanner shutter thing was broke, and it wasn't really printing. Oh, that's way better than it was. But I think I think this toner cartridge is shot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and uh, whoops, replace this toner cartridge with the one in the box. Brand new. Factory. This is part of the exchange program. Yep. I don't even think this is qualifies anymore, but I could be wrong.
This is the high yield one. So is that Lexmark right there. Pull this one out. Okay. Okay, and then you break the tab. toner dust to come out and let's throw this guy in there and see what we got could very well be that this cartridge was was defective from the get-go yeah let's see HB laser jet series and Canon EP 52 vintage See what it does. I'm gonna be oh look at that perfect freaking print. So the cartridge is uh, the cartridge was uh, bad. So it makes me think now. Was this fuser bad? Maybe not. So I'm just gonna stack it up in my vintage here. So we have a backup fuser. And I'm probably out of paper. No. It's not even, see, it's not even putting the toner on the back of the page. There we go. And I keep saying input jam, but it's not it's it's probably not adjusted right yeah sometimes this happens I don't know why it's having a problem. This might be another issue. Maybe because we're not tight. Very happy with the print now, though. I'll take half of this paper and just put it down in there.
this is the newer design. I don't know why it has a problem pulling from the original tray. There we go. So here it is, and um, I should I should reset the maintenance kit. Thirty-eight thousand. That's this is the page count so that never changes pages since last maintenance uh so i need to reset that but that's the exact um that is the exact amount of pages that have ever been printed on this so this thing hasn't even seen what it can do so i hope you guys enjoyed that i know it was a little bit of a uh, touch and go situation with this thing um, because you know the the plastics are really brittle on these old HPs and well now that we've got it restored back to original uh, putting a new toner cartridge in it definitely helped but it probably needed a maintenance kit because it was mistreated and as you can see I got the hard drive in here the jet direct 610n and the duplexer and this duplexer had never been used until I put it in this printer same with this card and now this one and uh, also with the third tray so I really hope I really hope you guys enjoyed this I'm trying to do more videos but I get yet again you know I'll do some on my vintage collection as soon as I get this place kind of cleaned up it's a pigsty uh, but I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I know I've got a video on here of me going through this, tearing it down. Um, but man, the last time me tearing this down, just in the last week or so, it's been really brittle and, uh, it's been moved at least three or four times and it's just no good. So now we got it back to, to working conditions. I just got to figure out why it's not pulling from this tray. And I think I'll go out and get some reams of paper and just really stack it full. And we'll see where it goes. All right. For another, uh, I guess, uh, another episode uh, on the uh, LaserJet 4000, which is now a T and an N. Appreciate it, guys. Take care.